Everything. I'm Libby. And I'm Jesse. And we're here with your Channel 3 News. There are still 10 spots available on the Hershey Bear Strip for November 20th. Please see Ms. Dougherty today if you're interested. All students going on the art field trip to Philadelphia must come to 219 today during A lunch for a brief meeting. Attention sophomores, do you want to become a leader and a change maker? If so, stop in the counseling office and pick up an application to become a Hobie ambassador at the Hugh O'Brien Youth Leadership Seminar. One sophomore from Big Spring High School will be chosen to attend the Hobie Seminar at Ship University in May of 2016. The purpose of Hobie is to bring together a select group of high school sophomores to interact with groups of distinguished leaders in business, government, education, and other professions to discuss present and future issues. Past Hobie recipients are Ms. Dougherty, Mr. Knoll, Josh Foster, Holly Jones, and Bailey Jones. Deadline to submit an application to the counseling office is November 13th, 2015. And that's all for us. Now sending it to Melanie with your sports. Hey Big Spring, I'm Melanie here with your Channel 3 Sports. Cross Country member Sam Krauss qualified for the state meet and will be running tomorrow. Here's what she had to say regarding the meet and her pre preparation for it. Hi, I'm Meg here with your Channel 3 News and today I had the pleasure to sit down with Sam Krauss, the only member of the cross country team to make it on the states. Hi, I'd like to start off by congratulating you on making it to states. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, how does it feel being the only Big Spring runner moving on? Um, it's definitely weird. It'd be nice to have my team with me, but um, they're all coming to support me at State, so that would be cool. Oh, that's nice. Uh, what have you done to reach this level of success? Um, I trained a lot over the summer, and I pushed myself in practice, and I was close last year to making it to State, so I definitely wanted to make it this year. So. Uh, what will you do to prepare for this State competition? Well, I have to practice by myself this week, but some of the runners are staying after and running with me, so that's nice. yeah, that's nice. Um, do you have any pre-race rituals for like good luck or anything like that? I always wear um, my lucky socks, <laughs> which are Christmas socks, and that's it pretty much. Uh, and uh, does the number of people you're running against affect how you do in a race? I actually think the more people I'm running against, like, pushes me more, so we'll see how I do. Okay, well, I wish you all the best of luck. Engines pumping and thumping in time, the green light flashes the fire. Um, Sam is a really good runner, and she's put a lot of hard work and effort into it, and she's just pure talent to begin with, and I, that's why I think she's so good at running, and um, she's really been a great teammate, she's very encouraging, always pushes all of us, and just, you know, she's one of the top runners, and I really hope she does well at States. Sam has put in a lot of work on the cross country team this year. She's encouraged everyone whenever she can after races, and has been very supportive and worked hard to get to where she is now. Sam is great. Like I've known her forever, and like, we've done a bunch of sports together. And she's always tried so hard at everything she does. Like it's no surprise to me at all that she's going to states. She's going to do great. Like I guarantee. <laughs> Student section. The, this Friday's student section will be a black and white out. Go on girls, be sure to wear your shirts and come out to support the team for senior night. Attention swimming and diving team members. The open swim practice for Wednesday, November 11th has been canceled. Please remember that physicals are Monday, November 9th and that there is a mandatory team meeting on Thursday, November 12th immediately after school for all members of the team. Please meet at the pool promptly after school on that date. An optional swim dive practice will be held after the meeting. And now to Jesse with your weather. Say you remember me standing in a nice dress, staring at the sunset, babe. Red lips and rosy cheeks. Say you'll see me again, even if it's trusted. Hey, Big Spring. It's Jesse here with your weather. And today is going to be some stray showers and, you know, real warm. And it's going to be a high of 75, so break out the short sleeves. And uh, tonight is going to be mostly cloudy with a low of 54. So that's been your weather.
Back to Livy and I with your news. This is how it goes. Sometimes somebody throws some paper where it doesn't belong. Or maybe there's a stash of cans and junk and trash. Some place where dropping litter is wrong. Hey, well, I'm excited. Yeah. You have no idea. Okay. Well, I see you walking into the main office and looking through something. Well, it does state here that once you sign off for your registration, you do take the responsibility to know that if you litter, it is a fine. And not only is it a fine, it's up to $300 for each violation. Okay? Don't litter. Save the environment. NFIB Young Entrepreneur Award. If you're planning on attending a two-year or four-year college and have started your own business through FFA, DECA, or FBLA, you may be eligible to apply for the NFIB Young Entrepreneur Award. Awards vary from 2000 to 15000 Please come to the counseling office and sign up if you're applying. Deadline is December 18th. Any senior who is planning on attending Pittsburgh Technical Institute next year, please stop by the guidance office for information on several scholarships that you are available for. If you missed the interview with Miss Davis yesterday, stay tuned after the broadcast and it will run again. You can also find yesterday's Channel 3 on the BSHS Newsroom Facebook page. You can keep up to date with your high school news by following us on Twitter at BSHSCH3 liking our Facebook page, BSHS Newsroom, and reading the latest articles at www.bshspawprint.com. That's it from us, Big Spring. I'm Libby. And I'm Jesse. That's been your Channel 3 News. Mark. Go, 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 shawty. It's your birthday. We gonna party like it's your birthday. She's a normal girl. Change somebody. Why did you decide to retire? This is a very tough decision because I love what I do and I do what I love. But um, I don't think one should be a relic. And um, I turned 71 last week and I'm like, hmm, most people I know who are 71 are retired. And here I am. And I'm like, maybe I ought to be thinking about this. And I had not, never, it really did not cross my radar screen. I was like, woohoo, this is too much fun. So I thought, oh, maybe I ought to think about this. Uh, what do you plan on doing when you're retired? Oh, well, you know from having me, Lydia, that I can pack my suitcase in a half an hour. I love to travel. So one of the things I will do is I will travel like a place um, that is first on my bucket list since we do our memory books. You'll be doing it next semester. Um, is Israel. And the group I travel with, which is a high active group, does not go in the summer because it's too hot. So that's going to be my first trip probably in the fall sometime. And um, then I'm just going to, um, I don't know, I may go into geriatric fitness. Can you see me harassing old people? I think this might be fun. No, I, I really don't know. I don't have any solid plans yet, but it's just September, so we'll see how it all formulates. What will you miss the most about teaching? Oh, my. I, I'll miss the students, and I'll miss my colleagues. I have really enjoyed um, teaching in the English department, um, and I've enjoyed just the entire faculty. It's just been, it's been a hoot. I have really enjoyed it. Um, in the 36 years you've been teaching, how would you say teaching has changed? Mm, good question, Lydia. Okay, um, I don't think that, I've never thought students have changed. What I have seen change is the lack of parenting. Um, honestly, I don't think a lot of parents want to parent. Would you say that bringing technology in, do you, would you say that that has improved the learning experience or more taken away from it? My job as I see it is to 
expose you to reading, how to read something and analyze it, how to write about it, and how to speak about it. And I don't really need technology to do that. Uh, hence why I teach in a circle, because I want people to be able to discuss how they feel about it. What advice would you have for like young teachers or teachers just coming into the profession? I would say that you have to, again, love what you do and do what you love. If you really enjoy your subject area, regardless of what it is, and okay, here's something really important, and you really love kids, okay, there's the biggie, all right, and realize that um, it, there's not a script and college has not, yet. no one is a textbook case, and a lot of times what they say in books is going to happen does not happen. It just does not happen, and you have to be prepared for that. Um, so I would say that and demand respect in your classroom. I really feel that is important, that we can agree to disagree, but you will respect another person's opinion. And that, I think, most people learned in kindergarten. Is there anything you'd like to add about um, your general experience teaching? I would say it is one of the most exciting, noble professions there is.